Career advancement in any industry involves many different factors. For one to successfully advance, he or she must possess all the basic qualifications, the right amount of knowledge, skills, and the correct mindset and attitude to perform the task as well as the willingness to learn tasks that are usually assigned to higher levels. In the maritime industry, there is one more crucial requirement. Perfect timing, or more importantly, having the patience to wait for it. Hi there guys, in this episode of our Life at Sea segment, we will be taking a glimpse at the life and story of the third mate. The third mate is the junior most bridge officer on board a cargo ship. Having been licensed as an officer in charge of the navigational watch, the third mate is assigned bridge watch keeping duties, the primary function of which is to keep the ship heading towards the right direction and safe from collision, grounding, and other navigational hazards while at sea. My name is JR. I work on board ships as a third mate. As a third mate, I am in charge of the bridge watchkeeping for 8 to 12 watch. In addition, I am also in charge of the maintenance of life-saving and firefighting equipment. To qualify for the position of third mate, one has to be a graduate of nautical studies, completed the minimum required sea experience, and be licensed as an officer in charge of a navigational watch. I graduated in 2017 from the Philippine Merchant Marine Academy with a degree of Bachelor of Science in Marine Transportation. I went on board my first ship as a cadet back in 2015, where I completed the required sea service to qualify for the licensure exams. I passed the exams and acquired my OIC license after graduation. But simply possessing the qualifications is only the minimum requirement and doesn't mean that you're going to get the job. In this highly competitive industry, no shipping company will settle for the minimum requirements. The determining factor for promotion will always be job performance. My second shipboard assignment was again as the cadet. It's part of our company's officer training program. That way, the cadets can be properly trained in all aspects of shipboard work. But my real target was to become an officer. It's a good thing that our company gives its full support for us to be able to plan our career. Remember this guy? He was the previous deck cadet when I came on board. He signed off last September, but after only two weeks vacation, he returned to our ship for a short contract as third mate. And the deck cadet who replaced him was JR. I joined this ship a few months ago, but as a decadet again, for the third time, because the next vacant slot for third mate was still a few months away. 
I accepted it because of financial reasons. But thankfully, the office proposed me for onboard promotion, which is why they sent the previous third mate for only a short contract. In any case, you can have all the qualifications, be excellent in your job performance, have multiple recommendations for promotion, but still not get promoted. Simply because there is no vacancy for the position that you are aspiring for. So perfect timing is crucial for advancement. And as I have said earlier, one must have the patience to wait for it. In the case of our new third mate, he planned things as carefully as he could, made some adjustments and even a few sacrifices as the situation required. And when finally the opportunity presented itself, he dived in without hesitation. So in those four months, I really worked hard and studied hard in order to meet the expectations. And finally, when the third mate signed off, I was the one who took over his position. Two ships passing in the night on the stormy sea. Got your navigation lights pointing right at me. From the dead of the night, far away from land. Searching for a harbor or a quiet strand. You could be the anchor that keeps my feet on the ground oh, oh. I would be the rock that keeps you from drowning Everyone has to start from somewhere even though you have undergone extensive training to prepare yourself being new to the position, it is only expected to go through a learning curve. The difficulties I faced at first was the change in my work schedule, routine, and of course, the pressure of having responsibilities of an officer. I cope up by remembering my training and force myself to remain stable under pressure. Also, if there are some things that are not clear to me, I don't hesitate to ask my superiors. My training for this position certainly helped. I was very lucky that the officers I have sailed with were very supportive and gave me plenty of opportunities to learn everything I need. I was given a chance to do the third mate's job under supervision as part of our handing over. But it feels different doing it while someone is guiding you compared to now that I am doing things by myself. Basically, I was still just waiting for orders. Back then, if I make a mistake, someone will be there to immediately correct me. But now, as an officer, the decisions I make are my own. And if I make a mistake, the ship and the crew might be put in danger. Based on my personal experience, it doesn't matter whether you are highly trained or have like 10 years or more of being a deck or engine rating before you become an officer. Bottom line is, once you go on your first contract as an officer, you're still going to be what is called in gaming parlance, a noob or a newbie. Meaning, 
you're still going to have to learn the ropes before you level up, so to speak. Because every time you get a promotion, it's like entering a whole new different ball game. The third mate has begun his first steps in career advancement. If he plans things carefully and makes the right decisions along the way, who knows, he might make captain within 10 years or maybe even less. As I've always said, the people who are most likely to succeed in this industry are the ones who are well-rounded, can make plans, and can readily adapt to any situation, not just on the job at hand, but also for their career path. Many seafarers dream about reaching the highest positions, but sadly, most of them just come up with a lot of excuses as to why they can't do this or why they can't do that. I mean, yeah, there's nothing wrong about dreaming. But at some point, you're going to have to wake up and start making plans and then set those plans into motion. Because at the end of the day, whether our dreams become reality or just remain as dreams, depends entirely on the plans and decisions that we make. Right now, I'm still getting used to being a third mate. But eventually, I will learn what I need to learn. And I know that if I stick to my goals, and if all goes well, hopefully, I will become a captain someday. Two ships passing in the night on the stormy sea